Hello everyone, Cindy Solomon again. Another exciting addition to the home game we got for you as I tangle up some control, controller and cables. Uh, this time around, you may remember last time or a couple of times ago, whenever these get put up, uh, I played uh, Jeopardy for the Game Boy. Well, this time around, we're playing Jeopardy Platinum Edition, and this was released in 1996, I do believe. Yeah, let me see here. Uh, 1996. And it was done by Game Tech, done by the same people, you know, they license up to the same people who did the original Jeopardy version for the Game Boy. Now, this is supposed to be like an updated version. However, I'm a little bit distressed by the manual where if you take a look at the pictures right here, uh, these are the graphics used in the original. And don't correlate the updated graphics uh, in this game. Um, however, there is one thing about this game that is different from the original, is that this is Super Game Boy compatible, which means that when you plug it into your Super Game Boy, you'll see uh, a, a separate color scheme for exclusive for the Super Game Boy. Now, with other Super Game Boy games, you know, you could get a nice background, uh, but apparently they didn't program that for this game. Now, 1,500 questions that are randomized, and they even say so in the manual. Uh, I want to quote what they said in the manual. Sometimes it's very good to actually have this manual. Um, where it says here? Uh, message to players. Uh, this cartridge uses a program which will randomly access data. At the end of play, the file is cleared and made available for future play. This is very much like shuffling a deck of cards after each game. Categories and questions are always selected at random by the computer. So although there are over 1,500 questions and over 300 categories, repetition will occur. So they're telling you up front, you know, it's limited. But it's a Game Boy game. It's meant to be limited. Although you could really push the boundaries on the Game Boy, especially 96, because that is a post uh, Link's Awakening world where we've seen these really wonderful Game Boy games. Like, this is post-Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, and all that stuff. But, let's not waste any time. I'll turn the Super Game Boy on, and we will play us some uh, Jeopardy uh, Platinum Edition. And I just hope it works this time. There it goes. You see it's blue and everything and you can tell it it is like that because you turn everything and you put here for the color palette you have the special color palette like this and the spinning smiley face shows that yep it's compatible and it's a nice blue tint this is something this is pretty much the same color tint you see in the game gear version Same models as the original game, but at least they changed up the jacket for the host. So at least that's something. We got two letter words, movies, law, art, musical instruments, and trees. Well, so we'll do two letter words to start. Now this time they actually added like a pause feature. And they did change up the graphics a bit. It does still like look like those old. You know, like mid to late eighties graphics. You know, you kinda see them, especially with the game tech ones.
also there's another edition that was released concurrently with the Platinum Edition. And it was a Jeopardy Team Tournament Edition. And that one is a little bit harder to come by than either the Platinum Edition that I have, that we're playing right now, or the uh, Sports Edition. Now, I'm fine with the pause edition because it really prevented early buzz-ins, especially when you're playing uh, the two-player mode. Now, I'm not talking much about... And I didn't talk about two-player mode in the original video because it's kind of hard to do. So, you'd have to have two gay boys, two link cables, and you play that way. Uh, I don't know the poem or the bread song. Oh, if. I thought, we'll see the animations are a little more sedate. I don't remember the Dennis Weaver show, though. Oh, McLeod. Um, see, what else can I talk about when it comes to this game? Uh, I do like the different colors. Like, it makes it a lot more special. And I think the blue looks really wonderful. Now, what I'm disappointed in is that the colors is only for the board and the question screens. Like, they didn't try to color the... They didn't color this. And to be honest, I kind of wish they would. Because I think it would have made it pop a lot more on the Super Game Boy. And the sound is a lot more muted for the buzz-ins. Although, I don't know if, you know, having more sound effects really is working for Jeopardy. I think this is Rebel Without a Cause. Although, something that I've noticed about this is that there is input lag and when you're dealing with a timer and finicky controls it really you see right there it the controls are just so 
finicky and you got input lag and Okay, it isn't Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, Giant, the other one. He only did three movies before he died tragically. Flynn. Like, people mainly know him for swashbuckling movies and all that fun stuff. I also heard Shadows and Fog was a really bad movie. Yeah, it was a uh, a late 80s Woody Allen movie so of course it was going to be bad like I don't know what it is but all these questions are skewing older unless this was Maverick Oh, my darling Clement, of course, older. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this. Um, I appreciate the coloring of the board, but I kind of wish this game, you know, could have at least colored the... Uh, contestants and the podiums. I do appreciate the small graphical upgrades, especially the host jacket, but it just seems like uh, a little more effort could have been put, put in could have been put into this. But it is still a good game and if you can find it for a decent price, I'd say go for it. Oh, something that I noticed. This used to be owned by a guy named Derek. Here, I'll go full screen and I'll show you. And I think I'll just do it from here on in. Uh, yeah, this was owned by a guy named Derek. If you could see that. He wrote that in red pen. Hmm, interesting. Well, that's going to do it for me for this edition. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Like this video if you could, please. Also, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any suggestions for any future home games you'd like us to take a look at, you know, list them below. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, become a Patreon backer at patreon.com slash gameshowgumbo. You get early access to the weekend videos. And that's essentially it. I'd like to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.